Gatri, Oklahoma, a town full of evil locations, one of which is the Black Jail. Haunted by inmates and religious extremists, it is the state's first territorial prison. Later, the Samaritan cult house with possible ties to murder and even terrorism. Possibly, several ghosts haunt the Black Jail with at least one confirmed death inside its dark walls. And the negative energy stored inside this two-story building comes from a very long, old and terrifying history. So this is a short documentary on the mysterious building of Oklahoma and its journey from Black Jail to Samaritan Cult House. In 1892, 15 years before Oklahoma even became a state, Black Jail was constructed with 18-inch thick walls of dark limestone and brick. The supposed inescapable jail was the first federal prison in the Midwest of the United States. This building, located at the intersection of 2nd Street and Noble Avenue, received its infamous name from its inmates. The black jail could house 90 prisoners with a solitary confinement in its basement. The material used for the construction of this two-story building offered no insulation from the cruel Midwest weather. In the summer, inmates suffered from dehydration because of the extensive heat that couldn't leave the thick, dark walls. While in winter, a damp and cold sensation made prisoners have flu and respiratory infections. Among the prisoners, the most well-known in American history were the Dalton Gang and Bill Dooleen. The Dalton Gang was also known as the Dalton Brothers because three of its members were brothers, Grayton, Bob and Emmett. Dooleen was the founder of the Wild Bunch, a gang specialized in robbing banks, trains and stagecoaches. Bill Dooleen was among the 14 inmates that escaped on July 5, 1896. But on August 24th, Deputy U.S. Marshal Heck Thomas killed Dooleen and had his body buried in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Still, Oklahoma wasn't a state. The jail was shut down and the remaining inmates were transferred to another federal prison. The building that was one of the most feared federal prison of the United States was abandoned for a while. But soon, the Nazarene Church bought the property and started renovating the building to accommodate its members. Soon it became one of the most prosperous churches in the area. The Nazarene Church occupied the old prison until the early 1970s when the congregation moved to another location. For many years, the Black Jail building remained abandoned. In 1991, a New Age group practitioner known as the Samaritans bought the old territorial prison. The Samaritan Foundation was founded by Linda Green. The cult travelled and followed Linda's rule and instructions while she conducted rituals and seminars. Linda Green signed the cult literature where she cautions believers not to talk on the phone because vampires can gain access to them. She claimed many celebrities and political figures were different types of zombies. Linda taught her followers how to release pent-up negative energy and release it correctly. One of her ways was sending any negative energy attached to a person into soy milk and then pouring it down the drain. She also believed barcodes harbored negative energy. The cult's literature have reference to vampires and even the Antichrist. Green also claimed in her writings that she was the Christ because she willingly gave her soul so that all of yours could survive. All this was very secretive until 1993 when it came out to public because of a court parenting battle. When a mother under the influence of the Samaritan Foundation took her two children, one at the age of seven, another four, from Massachusetts to Guthrie, Oklahoma, against father's consent. The father testified in court that the mother of the children presented a change of behavior after being in touch with the teaching from the Samaritan Foundation. She would place a circular drawing under groceries because the foundation's writing said that the barcode was evil. She also did the same drawing under children's pillows. The court ruled in favor of the father who took his children back to Massachusetts. And by the end of the same year, Department of Human Services had condemned the Samaritan cult house. When investigation went deeper into the property, police learned that more than 30 people were living inside and later it was completely shut down. By 1994, Samaritan Foundation's member decreased from 350 worldwide to 4. Linda Green, her friend Julia Williams, her fourth husband Dennis Green, and her fifth husband, filmmaker Alan Ross. In late November of 1995, Linda's fifth husband Alan Ross mysteriously disappeared. In December, police received a phone call from her fourth husband, Dennis Green, who said Linda killed Ross and buried him in the crawl space under their house with Julia Williams' help. 
On the other hand, Linda Green sent faxes to Guthrie police claiming that her ex-husband Dennis killed Allen. Meanwhile, the Ross family hired private investigators and they consulted a couple of psychics. Both psychics in separate occasions claimed Allen was alive in Texas. The first said he had a mental breakdown and the second said he had a trauma or that he had been hit in the head. Both stated that Ross did not want to be found. But years later, investigators found the body exactly where both Dennis and Linda Green told police it was buried in the crawl space under their house. An autopsy determined that Allen received two shots, one in the head with a 9 mm and castrated. To this day, nobody knows what actually happened to Allen Ross. The following year, in Berryville, Arkansas, Linda Green died at the age of 50 of liver failure. According to her family, she drank excessively to stop the voices in her head. Her friend Julia Williams was found guilty of being an accessory after the fact to murder by helping to bury the body and was sentenced to two years in prison. To this day, it's still unknown what type of rituals were actually practiced by this group inside the Samaritan cult house or the Black Jail. Black Jail or Nazarene Church or the Samaritan cult house remains abandoned till date. But claims of paranormal activity have been traced back since its territorial prison days. Disembodied voices are heard on the first floor in the basement area and in the hallways. The sound of metal doors slamming shut regardless of the fact that all but one metal door remains to this day. It is even reported that sounds of coughing are heard occasionally from inside the old cells. Also the sounds of children playing outside the black jail have been overheard by some of its neighbors. A female wearing a long printed dress and a large hat with white gloves believed to be a member of the Nazarene church is often seen here. A young woman's voice is heard singing on the ground floor near the main entrance. People refer to her as the Black Jail's Lady. Her ghost appears on occasions at dusk outside of the prison walking the grounds and trying to cross the street of Noble Avenue walking towards the main entrance. One of the most notorious and active ghosts from Black Jail is witnessed by several people appearing at his old cell window looking across the street. Several paranormal researchers believe the name of the ghost is James Phillips. According to the state capital newspaper and prison records, Phillips murdered a local man. In consequence, he was the first white man sentenced to be hanged at the jail in the summer of 1907. Reported by guards from his cell window, Phillips was watching the construction of the gallows across the street of Noble Avenue, in which he was going to be hung later that same day. Then all of a sudden, he abruptly fell backwards onto his bunk, dying instantly without a sound or even a word of warning. Coroners determined that his death was because of heart failure, exactly quoting, he died of fright. But it appears that his spirit has no rest. Shortly after his death, guards, prisoners and other witnesses claim to hear footsteps within his cell and along the hallway that leads to it. The sound of a man sobbing is also heard coming from Philip's cell. The jail has been investigated by several paranormal research groups like the local Ghosts, Haunts of Oklahoma and Urban Legend Investigations Group and even the famous Ghost Adventures crew and they came up with several Class A EVPs or Electronic Voice Phenomena which are capable of recording electronic sounds or voices interpreted as spirit voices. In 2001, Christian Boyer released the documentary Missing Allen, and a whole MSNBC investigative report named Searching for Allen was also released. Despite all this, Black Jail and events surrounding it still remains a mystery to this day. Abandoned since the Samaritan Foundation left, the jail today only attracts paranormal investigators, curious to catch paranormal evidences from the other dimension. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please be sure to leave a like, it motivates me a lot. And don't forget to hit that bell icon after subscribing. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the internet.